we're going to turn to our, our second polling question. We're going to try to get through that here pretty quickly. Uh, that question, Miles, if you can throw it up, is what are the most challenging aspects of the IND process for you, our, our audience? Choose your top three. So, uh, we, you know, we, we threw a sampling up there of potential challenges you might face. Um, pick, pick the top three. Uh, and and if, uh, if there's an other, an obvious other that I'm missing, uh, we'll see if the wisdom of the crowd uh, agrees there's an obvious other. Be, be sure to comment uh, in, the, in the chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, while, while that poll is underway, uh, we'll turn back to Danielle and Helen. Helen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this one at you uh, since you're on my screen. Uh, what tools and resources are available uh, to pre and early clinical companies to better prepare and protect them from a clinical hold. So like, if you look around, you know, what you're doing at Emoja, like, uh, are there any specific, I don't know, tools, applications, processes, policies uh, that you employ as sort of a de-risking element? You know, I can't speak for Emoja per se, but um, if you, a good resource is the FDA website. And it's not just for regulations and guidances. Um, they have this great series called OTAT Learn, and this is specific for SIBO and cell and gene therapies. Um, and it's kind of like a web page for industry where they have different courses. And they cover courses from like early consider considerations for early clinical trial development of gene and cell therapies, um, CMC content of an IND. They talk about RMAT and BTD, what it is, what it covers, um, the benefits of it, um, as well as IND safety reporting. So they have a lot of information in there on um, what you should be looking for to put together in an IND for a cell and gene therapy. They also have, uh, CBER's been initiating these town halls. Um, they started uh, sometime around October of last year where they focused on CMC aspects of gene therapies. And then in December, they did CMC aspects of cell therapies. And coming in February, they'll be doing a clinical um, aspect of gene therapy, and they'll probably follow up a few months later with clinical aspects of um, cell therapies. And so I think they're trying to get ahead and realizing that the slew of um, cell and gene therapy products are increasing. Um, and then the other thing that I do that I like is I subscribe to what's new at CBER, CDR, CDRH, whatnot. If you go into the FDA website, you can um, log into it and add a notification so that you get notifications from the different uh, fields that you're interested in, whether it's safety reporting, whether it's warning letters, um, changes in labeling, new approved products. I um, mean, it kind of gets you up to date on what's happening within the FDA um, and also just what's happening within industry. So those are some really good um, references. I know sometimes people can get overwhelmed by navigating the FDA website, but um, it's a great resource and you can even tap into summary basis of approvals for previous products. And there are areas where you can find within administrative sections, detailed information on like um, meetings that they've had, uh, that a company has had with the agencies to get a feel for some of the concerns that have been raised by the agency. Um, these are just some really good resources to get ahead Yeah. and get information, yeah. Perfect, perfect time to remind our audience that uh, the the on-demand version of this will be available like within 24 hours of when we stop. So you, you can you can rewind and, and you can go back to those very specific uh, suggestions Helen made around uh, pages on the FDA's website because to her point, it is, it is very difficult to navigate and we really appreciate you sharing some sort of laser-focused guidance to specific resources and pages on that website. Uh, Daniela, anything to add uh, to that question around tools and resources available to uh, to, to sort of de-risk yourself from a, a clinical hold? Alan's advice was excellent, uh, so I can echo all of that. Maybe the only thing to add on the Cedar side is that Cedar as a Cedar Small Business and Industry Assistance website webpage, and there uh, there, is, there are similar type of um, resources like Helen was uh, mentioning, but on the Cedar site, so Cedar Learn, those are free online tutorials. Uh, there is even an FDA basics for industry. So for those in the audience that have a Cedar regulated product, I would encourage them to look at those websites too. Excellent. Thank you, Daniela. Miles, let's take a look at the results from that poll. Preparing CMC packages. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> guess what? 
next month, uh, for those of you who chose preparing CMC packages, next month I am hosting on February 28th the next of our Bioprocess Online Live events, uh, February 28th, 11 a.m., uh, Takeda's Brian Kirk and Sumito Vance, Blair McNeil, are going to join me for a conversation on leveraging data to build a CMC foundation. Uh, we're going to speak to both the process development side and the regulatory side and how uh, data-centric CMC packages uh, create efficiencies on both sides of that. So uh, you're in luck. Boy, timely, right? Timely. Didn't plan any of this. Uh, but tune in February 28th. Mark it down on your calendar. A couple of great guests coming up.